Well, behind me is the lovely Parliament building here in uh, Budapest, Hungary, which also happens to be the birthplace of George Soros. And there's a connection between George Soros and the government of Hungary, of Viktor Orban, in the sense that um, they don't seem to like each other. I'm sure there are many things in Orban's policies that I would disagree with him on. But on one thing, uh, he has absolutely uh, sussed what's going on. And that is the manipulation of the networks of George Soros, the American-Hungarian financial billionaire who has so far put $32 billion into a network known as uh, the Open Society Foundation that manipulates political and other events in the world behind the guise of being a NGO or non-governmental organization. And these networks of so-called NGOs are one of the major ways that political and society situations are manipulated and changed outside of elected governments. And Viktor Orban realized this in terms of the manipulations of the Open Society Network of Soros in Hungary. And the last time uh, I came to Hungary, another part of the country, uh, there were posters, massive posters everywhere with Soros's face on, uh, basically describing him as an enemy of the country. Now, when you look at the operations of Soros, not just in Hungary, not just in Europe, but of course across North America and elsewhere, you find um, that they are used to manipulate people's revolutions, for instance, where it appears that a target regime, like the Arab Spring uh, situation that Soros organizations were involved in, it seems that there is a spontaneous people's revolution to unseat, just by coincidence, nothing to worry about, a leader or regime that the West wants removed. And behind the apparent spontaneity of these people's revolutions are uh, Soros organizations in league with others who fund and train people in the art of triggering these people protests that turn into regime change. And the vast majority of people uh, who are part of this, quote, revolution, genuinely believe that it is spontaneous and they are part of a, a people's uprising. When in fact, the whole thing was manipulated from the start. And what happens afterwards is the leader that replaces the one removed is one that the West wanted all along. If you look at Egypt, um, their leaders uh, were appalling, yes. And it's because there are so many appalling uh, political leaders in terms of uh, the people that it is so easy so often to spark these people's revolutions because people want rid of the leader genuinely but if you look at Egypt there was an Arab Spring oh freedom freedom I remember sitting in a hotel room in Ukraine watching live pictures on Al Jazeera of all the crowds in the big square in Cairo cheering because um, the leader they were targeting has stepped down but at the end of it all look at it you now have a military government in Egypt under this guy Sisi, who's just a puppet of the West. And this is a specialization of the Soros networks. There was a, uh, there is, not was, a academic in Britain called Frank Faridi who told a, a British national newspaper how um, he spent time with these, these uh, people that run the Open Society network of Soros and how they were bragging to him, how they had um, unseated regimes and governments in Europe and Middle East and Africa. And this is what's going on in the background. You see things in the news like an, an uprising or someone being overthrown. But this is how it came about often. Not every time, but overwhelmingly, that's how it came about. Soros's networks were involved, for instance, in the, uh, the regime change in Ukraine. That was nothing more than an American government, State Department coup on the people of Ukraine. Um, and so it's understandable, sitting here in Soros's home city, that the government here would have a very good idea of how Soros operates. And one of, the, um, one of the things that really concentrated the mind of uh, the Orban government was when they realized, and it's been in my books for some time, that these Soros networks are fueling this mass movement of people out of the Middle East and Africa 
into Europe, this, this, this great movement of people called the migration crisis. And quite rightly, uh, those that are fleeing war from places like Syria, wars that the West has created, should be helped and supported. But what has happened is vast numbers of people who are not fleeing war have also come into Europe with all the problems that's caused. No good saying, oh, it's racism, Nazi and all this stuff. Look at it. Enormous problems are being caused by the sheer numbers. And Orban realised that the Soros networks were massively involved in this, and that's why, or one major reason, why they, um, they targeted him and sought to expose his machinations. But there's another part of this Soros network and its manipulation that is becoming more and more blatant, not least in America. And that is how his money and the organizations he funds on what is called the progressive left, how he has hijacked left of center politics and turned it on its head, inverted the whole thing. So we've gone from the, the left and the gen genuinely liberal left that I knew, grew up with in a household like that. And now we have the, quote, progressive left, which is not only not liberal, but the absolute polar opposite of it. This is the left, progressive left, that drives political correctness, which is nothing more than manipulating the population to silence itself. You can't say this, you can't have that opinion, you can't have this opinion. And it's the progressive left that is cheering when these massive corporations like Facebook and Google censor other opinions and censor the alternative media. And it's this same progressive left or the extremes of it that manifest as groups like Antifa who call themselves anti-fascist but then go onto the streets and act like them. These are the anti-fascist progressives who are using the same techniques as uh, Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister in terms of silencing the opposition and silencing dissent and in effect the technique of Nazi book burning where you ban censor everything that doesn't support what you're doing or doesn't include what you want people to believe. Once upon a time, not that long ago, the liberal left, the genuine liberal left that I knew, would have been on that case massively, demanding freedom of speech. Now, the progressive left is demanding that freedom of speech is taken away. And the difference between the first one and the second one to a vast extent is Soros money. They might ask themselves, the progressive left organizations that take, and my goodness, there are so many of them, that take Soros money in Europe and in America, etc. They might ask themselves why someone who said that they don't even think about the social consequences of what they do, they only think about making money, why someone with that mentality would be funding all these claim to be but not liberal left organizations? Why would he do that? He just said he don't care about what you say you care for. But the answer is, to the answer to that apparent contradiction is very simple. He's funding the progressive left and inverting its view of the world to control that side of politics. At the same time, you have people like Sheldon Adelson, the Las Vegas casino magnate and uh, Israeli uh, media mogul, who was Trump's biggest funder. So you have Trump funded, and then you have uh, Soros funding the left, who oppose Trump vehemently. And what have you created in America? Probably the most divided society, certainly in living memory, but po possibly ever which breaks down basically the political debate in do you love Trump or do you hate him? And when you see all the impact that Soros money um, has had in hijacking the left, in funding the organizations, by the way, that produce the people that were haranguing um, senators on the uh, Judiciary Committee during the hearings with Kavanaugh in the situation with this Christine Ford, Soros was funding the organizations that produced those people to create that protest. The rule of the mob, not mature debate is being funded by Soros. The mentality that says, if you disagree with me, you're a Nazi or a bigot or a racist, that's being funded by Soros. And at least one government has realized that and sought to do something about it. And uh, of course, the web in general 
doesn't want to do anything about it. The hidden web of global manipulation because Soros is serving it just as Sheldon Adelson is serving it. And uh, when you think of the influence that George Soros and his money has on particularly Western society, but not only, it is extraordinary that he gets away with it. And the only way it can be stopped is to bring to the surface what he's doing and how it is transforming our society.